In this video, I'm going to show you how I've been designing and making panels for circuits in the underscores catalog. As you may already know, I have been selling a selection of electronic video instruments in my online shop. These circuits were designed to be DIY friendly and affordable, and as such have been built as bare PCBs with all their components exposed. Personally, I like this punk aesthetic and have never had any technical problems with leaving them exposed like this, but it is commonly requested to have enclosures available as an option. So I'm going to share my process of building some panels with you now. I have been house sitting this week with access to a, to a laser cutter, which is the perfect tool for fabricating panels. As an example, I will walk through the process I've used to create two kinds of panels for this syncope circuit. A standalone enclosure and a Euro rackable front panel. I used KiCad to design my PCBs and so I've decided to keep the panel design in KiCad also. I copy the entire PCB layout into a new project and delete everything except the edge cuts, silk screen and interface footprints. When laying things out in KiCad, I'm using this DXDY display quite a lot. Spacebar resets it to the, to the cursor's current position, then you can always know how far things are aw away from each other when you position them. Next I will place one at a time each interface footprint with a corresponding cutout on the panel. I've been keeping a reference table as I experiment for which size to replace each part with. This hasn't been foolproof forever as I will touch on later. The 3D viewer in KiCad is a great way to get a feel for how the panel is coming along. Once all the footprints have been removed, I then start working on the silkscreen layer. This is the text and markings you, you see on the panel. Mine are extremely simple and functional. I've never had much of an eye for good graphics design.
the panel designing is pretty much done. The nice thing about designing panels in KiCad is that we can easily export the file when we're finished as a Gerber file so these panels can be fabricated out of FR4 at a PCB house. But for now, we will export as a SVG to send to the, to the laser. A quick detour now for anyone interested in details of the specific laser cutter I'm using. This laser is a Auto Laser Master 3 with a 10 watt diode head and a few extras including a Comgrow laser tent, a cheap fume extractor, honeycomb cutting surface, aquarium pump for air assist and an internal LED strip to make it look pretty. I could talk more about this setup if anyone's interested but we'll save this for another day. We are using light burn to control the laser. I couldn't figure out why but for some reason light burn didn't like some of the way that KiCad exports SVGs. I, se I settled on this workaround which does the job nicely. Export edge cut and front silkscreen from KiCad as SVG. Open these SVGs with Inkscape and save a copy as DXF. Import these DFX files into Lightburn. Next we can tell the laser how to cut out these panels. I'm using 3mm sheets of MDF board to cut out my panels. The text is imported as single lines. We can give some thickness to it by using this offset tool. Setting delete original and round edges and then setting the offset amount. I will overlay the two channels and use the grid outline button to make sure the cutting area is aligned with my material. Now we will do the same thing again but for a Euro Rackable panel. I found some reference images that show the HP width and screw hole spacings for Euro Rack panels and made this into an outline in KiCad. Here I'm just copying the 20 HP outline I had already made from another design, an upcoming colorizer circuit. and then use the four corner screws to align the panel in place, removing the old outline as well. Reposition the silkscreen around a bit if needed.
and then send it over to Lightburn via Thinkscape, same as before. I tried making panels this way for a couple of different circuits in the underscores catalog. Here's a few of my thoughts. My plan was to prototype with MDF and then order FR4 versions of these panels to sell in the shop. But after doing this, I personally prefer the look of the wood versions. What do you think? Should I offer both options in the shop? These small switches sit a bit too low with the panel on top, especially if the circuit also has toggle switches, which require higher standoffs. The size of some interface holes depend on how close the panel needs to sit to the board. I plan on getting some mountable cables to expose USB and HDMI on Raspberry Pi panels, although I'm not sure if they will fit like this. Another option would be to do an expansion module to the side instead. For the 5 volt barrel jack circuits in the Euro case, my idea was to use one of these vertical barrels soldered onto the bottom of the PCB. Then you can break out 5 volts from your Euro power supply to power it from within the case. I like seeing these circuits mounted with Euro rack front panels like this. I want to however make the distinction between Euro rack friendly designs, like I tried to make all of these, and an actual Euro rack module version of the circuit, which I'm still planning to make sometime in the future. These Euro rack friendly designs all have their interfacing parts sitting vertic vertically, so it is possible to mount them like this. However, they are still designed to be DIY and beginner friendly first, so mainly through hole components and single power supplies. The true Eurorack versions of these circuits I hope to do in the future will prioritize HP space, layout, and taller parts that work better rack mounted. I also want to add more CV control where possible. <laughs> 